this traffic safety allocation. Dick DeGray wanting to purchase more of these blinking crosswalk lights, mm-hmm. um, and instead they've decided to do what? They've they've made it more general. They've said we'll we'll do these traffic calming or um, pedestrian safety devices, but we'll wait two months and get a recommendation from the Department of Public Service. Dick was not necessarily satisfied with this as an outcome. Um, And it was before the final vote was taken. But when they talked about relying on the Traffic Safety Committee for these recommendations and questioning their expertise on the issues versus anybody else's expertise, uh, to me, I don't necessarily, if I extrapolate that thread, I don't think he was necessarily satisfied with this outcome. With all due respect to everybody that sits on traffic safety, is there a traffic engineer on traffic safety? I'm seeing something on the street in other communities that I feel works well, works very well. And as a board person who got elected, I feel that this is an important issue. But Steve Barrett uh, did speak to the fact that they do use uh, engineers when they make these assessments, right? Yeah, that's part of the the recommendation. And they usually get stuff from the committee and then they'll talk with an engineer. So it's it's a multi-phase process. But $30,000 for traffic safety, and this is just a one-time expenditure. The other thing he wanted to do was put this in the budget. They didn't make a decision on that. No, it's just it's just for this year. Glad to have you on the call this week because of everything that happened last week with the case of Nathan Carmen, uh, this Vernon resident who was lost at sea for a week with his mother in Rhode Island. She apparently... Uh, drowned in the incident and then all of a sudden all the uh, revelations that he is also related to uh, Mr. Chicalos who was murdered last year. Now this really started as a small story for the reformer. I believe the first article you wrote about it was basically just a a wire story uh, that was on the inside of the page. Like everybody we heard about this you know just on the regular news and we really didn't see any connection with our local area One of my reporters, actually, Chris Mays, picked up on it and said he had moved to Vernon about two and a half years ago. And that's when the wheels started turning and we decided we better start doing a little more work on the story. So it almost, for you guys, became a media covering a media kind of story. I know some of the neighbors down in Vernon weren't too happy with having ten news organizations, six satellite trucks, and even a helicopter flying overhead. Not sure what they all thought they were going to get out of this guy. Yeah. Do you think that, I mean, how much more of a hype factor was that side story of the murdered grandfather in this case? Uh, it doesn't seem like it's really, it seems like an extreme coincidence more than anything relevant to this uh, young man being lost at sea. Well, I make no assumptions. Right. But the fact that he was the last one to see his grandfather alive and the last one to see his mother alive and that his grandfather gave $40 million to his four daughters, $10 million of which you would presume went to uh, Nathan's mother, of course people are going to wonder. A little bit of intrigue at last Tuesday's meeting because David Scholes, who's the representative for the town of Brattleboro on the management district board, uh, they feel did not follow through on the town's plans. He was instructed to vote on a budget that discontinued the recycling facility at the district, but the vote didn't necessarily come up that way. Before the meeting started, there was a finance committee meeting, and the chairman of the board of supervisors came up with this new idea rather than the assessment model with grand list and population. He thought about a 20% surcharge that would save the, the towns without transfer stations about the same amount of money. Now, David Scholes voted to basically have a plan that added this 20% surcharge and keep the MRF open. Yeah. That did not go over well last Tuesday with the select board. I have some real concern with uh, the board having voted to instruct its representative to the Salt Waste Management District to cast its votes one way and then those votes be cast another way. One of the responsibilities when I'm at that meeting is also look out for the, the um, interests of the Waste Management District. And I think it, that was the, the right vote to make. Basically, you said, we set the vote one way, you cast it another way. And Skoll's, uh, basically, his defense was uh, the, the directive I was given never came up for a vote. <laughs> 